All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Shut Up and Invest. We are in the house live in Miami with Mr. Joe Ray. What is going on, Kevin, man? Ready for this episode, bro? This episode is... Uh, this is going to be dear this and dear to both the hearts. Yeah. This is the one for me. You've been trying to hold off on... Yeah, yeah, I wasn't ready to do it. official video camera. <laughs> and yeah, thanks no, to our I, boy we got in the studio today. And, and, I, and I wanted to do it with... A clear head and yeah. let some time pass by because the show today is about the death of Kobe Bryant and the people that were in the helicopter with him and his daughter and and that put me in a place where number one, I didn't realize how big of an impact Kobe and the Mamba mentality actually had, even though I consciously mm-hmm really identified with it. It's funny how when someone's gone, mm-hmm. you start to realize what kind of an impact that is. And that also started bringing up a lot more, you know, feelings and thoughts. So we're going to get into that today. Yeah. Talk about Mamba mentality, what that really is. Talk what does about, it mean for business? Talk about Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get into how his business side was about to be out of this world just as his basketball side was, you know, kind of what Kobe meant to both of us. I mean, you know, he's, for our age, our generation, I mean, he was our greatest basketball player, you know, the Michael Jordan. To me, the closest thing to Michael Jordan, I've been in heated arguments with people over Kobe. Me and my brother almost got in fist fights over him saying LeBron's better than Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> like, true fist fights. I mean, know. I think first and foremost, before we move on, let's clarify that right quick right now. <laughs> The reason why LeBron is not better than Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, by the way, a big time Laker fan. Yes, I like uh, the Miami Heat, but they come number two because when I started liking basketball, exactly. the Los Angeles Lakers were around and Miami did not have a team. They didn't even exist back then. So yeah. I think I was eight years so old like, when you, Miami Heat were. You're, you're good because you can root for both and still be like, hey, I'm a Lakers fan. Right, there right. No if, but if I go to the Miami Heat Laker game, I'm going in my Kobe jersey. Exactly. I've done that from day one. I had Miami Heat season tickets when Shaq and Dwayne Wade were on the team and they won the championship. But whenever the Lakers came to town, I had my Kobe jersey yeah. on. And it's funny because with season tickets, you sit with <laughs> the same people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So throughout the whole season, hey, what's up? What's up, Miami Heat? Celebrate when they win. And I celebrate and I like the Miami Heat. And again, I was season ticket holder for four years. But when I would show up with the Kobe jersey, these people that knew me for so long, so many guys looked at me like, what are you doing and who are you? And, <laughs> and the truth is, is that I was a Lakers fan before the Miami Heat were even created. And when LeBron James came to the Miami Heat, and yes, you know, we won championships as Miami Heat with LeBron James. Kobe Bryant will always be over LeBron James for one simple reason. It's called clutch. Yeah. Kobe Bryant has the Mamba mentality, which we'll get into how, what that means when it comes to business and real estate. But the Mamba mentality means when the pressure's on, when it's time to step, <laughs> to step up, up, you are going to either make it or break it. Mm-hmm. And I just apparently broke this mic. <laughs> <laughs> get a little passionate when it comes to the Mamba mentality. Look at that. So there's some people that want. They want the ball. They want the ball. Yeah. They want Just the ball. like when you have a client calling or a potential deal calling or an opportunity, there is people that get nervous mm-hmm. and shy away from it. And then there's people that say, give me that phone. Yep. Or, sir, where are you right now? I'll meet you at the property right now. That's Mamba mentality. I agree that this. I'm gonna get it done. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm gonna get it done. Watch me get this deal. I'm gonna get it done. And that's that's yeah, that's crazy because that actually sums up what it is. And like that's definitely what I know we both have because I mean there's deals that I have where the title company says this can't be done. This person and I'm like, I'm gonna go out there and do it myself. I've driven down to the register of deeds. 
to get a document <laughs> because the deal needs to close tomorrow. I'm not going to wait for you to send your butt, you know, for the company to mail. Right. And right, how many you know? times do people want to back out of deals? Yeah. And it's like, no, we're going to get this done. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to figure out. You want the ball. You're not going to shy away from that. And you don't care about the, if, if it doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, you're going to take on all the all the heat that comes with it, right? The one thing that they always said about Kobe was, oh, Kobe shoots too much or this. He doesn't pass the ball. Unless Kobe's one of the best passers the game's ever seen, okay? But guess what? Kobe's mentality is, I'm going to go to the bucket and get it done, right? And if you didn't see those Laker teams, it was Kobe and Shaq early on, people don't remember this. Kobe's the one who had the ball in his hand in the fourth quarter. Shaq was getting fouled. Right. They didn't give the ball to Shaq. He no. was a liability. Kobe, in those first three when Shaq was there, and they said it was all Shaq, he was the one that finished every game. Yeah. It was Kobe. You know, as a young kid, he was like 20, you yeah. know? And then 21. when Shaq was gone, he did it all over again. All over again. With a whole new squad, which is a whole nother aspect of business. Kobe, I remember... When Shaq left and everybody said, Kobe's done. He's not going to be able to do it. He'll never win it again. He's never going to win it again. (laughs) He made it a point. And that's where the Mamba mentality really got like to the next level. Where he said, watch me. Don't believe me. Just watch. And funny enough, I walk around constantly creating competitive stories in my head. And I've said it here on this show before. Yeah. People don't even understand that I'm in competition (laughs) with them. Exactly. They have no idea. Whenever we don't do business together, I'm like, that's going to be the biggest mistake of your life. (laughs) That's going to be the biggest mistake of your life because you are going to regret. You are going to look back and be like, damn. And that's Mamba mentality. It is. Yeah. It's competition, man. Like, you know, he was the greatest. He came from an era. Well, he grew up watching an era, that era that we watched where... You saw guys putting forearms through Jordan's throat. You saw, you know, people getting punched. Like, like the defense was was ran, ramped up. You could put your hands on guys without a foul being called. Right, right. right? It was a tough AAU, physical. AAU basketball wasn't what it is today, where everybody plays together. No, you played where you went to school. And no you friends. Against, and there was no friends. No new friends. And I think he's the last. Of course, the torch was passed from Kobe, LeBron. I mean, we all know that. Kobe was the last one from that era, where it's like when we're on that court. I'm gonna go at you. And then off season, if I'm playing you, if I'm playing the Spurs every year in Western Finals, I can't hang out with the Spurs. <laughs> because my mindset has to be I need to crush Tim Duncan and Tony Parker. Correct. Right? And you see a lot of people now, and believe me, everyone loved Kobe. If you say anything from when this happened, he was beloved. Right. right? He was respected. He was beloved. Every player, I've never seen NBA players more emotional in my life, you know, about what happened because he was loved by the, the whole sports world. Yeah, but like they respected the fact that that's who he was, that his competition was at such a level that like he had to make it, you're my enemy on that court. Which is the also thing that from this whole thing, I thought to myself about leaving your mark. Look how much, not just the sports world, but all the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, I heard women that don't even, they're not even into sports talking about Kobe and talking about the situation and leaving your mark. And it just made me really reflect as to what are the things that I'm focusing on today? What are the things that are important to me? And I may not be making a global impact like Kobe was um, due to the celebrity and the position that he was in, but am I leaving a mark around my community? What's going to be the reaction with my loved ones and the people that I know when I'm no longer here? Mm -hmm. Am I leaving a mark where people are going to react a certain type of way or will it be like, oh, damn, that sucks. All right, well, you know, damn, I feel for his family and keep it moving. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's your impact going to be? What's the, the impact? Um, that and at the same time, he was with his daughter and he left behind. What, three yeah, daughters? Three daughters and a wife. And a wife. Three and daughters so and a wife. Your initial thing with that is what am I leaving behind for them to make sure that they're OK? <laughs> Which I think is the whole premise of why we even started this show. It is. So those two aspects of it, I also want to kind of talk about a little bit because that's kind of the motivation and where I try to apply Mamba mentality to because every day I wake up and the email, the phone, the this, the that, the deals, the clients. I mean, we have to pause this show real quick before starting because one of the deals that we're doing together Mm -hmm. calls right now and that all could easily be distracting if you don't keep focused on the why. Yeah, the why. 
the why is huge. And I think Kobe's why was pretty, pretty defined and explained. We all saw it. Like, it's not a guy that you heard that was out. He was with his wife, with his kids. I mean, the, the daughter thing struck me. You know, first of all, both my sons worship Kobe because of me, right? He's their favorite player because he was my favorite player, mm. right? So they're younger kids who, like, in the LeBron age, don't even like LeBron. Like, my son was mad at LeBron went to Lakers because we just had so much angst against LeBron because we're Kobe, you know, we're Kobe right, guys. Right. Kobe's right? better than LeBron <laughs> argument. <laughs> yeah, so, like, when it happened, it was just like, you know, you just think about all the times you watch Lakers games with your sons, you know, like, and, you know, and I saw the shock on their fit, you know, like my one son, I saw he texted me, my other son, Isaac, you know, he was just shocked, couldn't even believe it, you know. Um, so, I mean, like a really short quote like that, but then his daughter with him, you know, and the way he was championing just girls, women's sports from the WNBA down to his daughter, you know, me having three daughters who I'm very, very active in her life. It was just like, oh, man, you know. Did you hear the in the memorial when his agent was talking about the last communication they had and that he realized he was actually talking to him while Kobe was in the helicopter? No, I I, re, I haven't even watched that yet. I recorded it. I can't even sit down and watch it yet. So listen, <laughs> the agent was telling a story at the memorial saying that he was in church and usually he ignores his phone, but something tugged at him to check his phone mm-hmm. when it was buzzing in his pocket. So when he pulled it out, he saw that it was Kobe. So usually he would just answer him back yeah. after church. After no church, big yeah. deal. But for whatever reason, he's felt, he says he felt, again, a little bit of a tug and decided to do something he wouldn't normally do and just answer back. And it was Kobe texting him saying, hey, who do you know in the baseball agent world who's you know the, the best connect? Because he wanted to connect that Hall of Rosen. Fame baseball coach that was in the helicopter's his, yeah. daughter who wanted to become a baseball agent, wanted to connect them. And literally a couple minutes later, his phone started blowing up completely because the helicopter crashed. And that's when he realized that he was talking to Kobe while he was getting on the helicopter. He was probably in the helicopter with the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame co- baseball coach talking about this. Um I'm not sure if the daughter was in that plane too as well or not, but the point that he was making in the memorial was that in Kobe's last moments, he was trying to help somebody else. He was trying to help somebody else. He was connecting Mm -hmm. and uh, that's how he went down. So, I mean, just in that plane, I mean, he was, you know, he was on a helicopter, I mean, the helicopter, like he, like that, he was going to coach his daughter and his daughter's team, you know, in a game. Yeah. I've been in, I've done that. I've been on the bus or on a plane to a gymnastics meet with my daughter or on a bus with my son, you know, going to coach somewhere. Yeah. You know, that's just... When I heard that, I said, in my last moments, if someone can say he went out trying to do what he always does, which is look out and help people, that's probably the best way to be remembered or for somebody to say something about it. So that's now... Something that I consciously have put part of my morning routine since his passing is today before you go back to bed, as I get up in bed and I'm doing my meditations and whatnot, I'm saying before I get back to bed, be the best, be better than you were yesterday and make sure you help somebody today. Mm -hmm. And I think what we do as far as real estate and it's a big aspect of financial freedom. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, the reason why we have these conversations, the reason why people are so interested in real estate is because they know it's an opportunity to make some good money, right? Financial freedom is a little bit of a selfish vibe, but yet it's also, depending on how you look at it, for your family and your friends too. But at the same time, you're making sure you're taking care of yourself, which there's nothing wrong with that. You got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. In what we do, the aspect of real estate that not many people may realize is that you're only going to accomplish financial freedom if you help a lot of people. Yeah. You cannot make money in real estate without helping others. Because if you're coming off at just helping yourself, 
No one's going to do deals with you. <laughs> Nobody. It will, you might get a couple deals in the bag. You might screw a couple people over. But you'll, be, you'll, you'll burn That's out That's it. You'll Man, burn you'll out burn quick. Out I know. Listen, how many people ha- that I st- started doing deals with back in the day are no longer here? Oh, my goodness. How many people were in the industry <laughs> that are no longer in the industry? The people die out because you burn too many bridges. And sure, you made a little pocket change. Sure, you made a couple hundred thousand, whatever it might be. But then you got to go. And I hope people realize that because right now today where, you know, real estate investing is the hottest topic in the world. Everybody wants to be. I tell the people daily who want to be an investor. And I've always told people about real estate when I got into it. Like, it's not for everybody, right? If you think it's just to come and make money, you know, think twice because you need to come in here that you're going to solve problems, right? Like we deal with people's problems, <laughs> like financial problems, fam- you know, familiar problems, all kinds of stuff. And if you're not built to be someone who can take that stuff on and help others out, then you're not going to really be that successful in it. You know right. I mean? You can sit back and just say, I want to, like, you know, even flipping houses and all, all the different stuff that you want to do, it all equates to dealing with people, you know? Right. And it's not it's not false when they say the best deals do come from the most complex problems that you solve in real estate. Um, you know, and, and it's creating a win-win situation. For everybody involved. And the funny part is, is like, I tie it back to Kobe, right? So like, I've given this a lot of thought. I, I've studied Kobe <laughs> I've modeled myself since I was young with that same mentality. I approach sports with the same mentality he did. I approach business with the same mm-hmm. mentality. Again, I realize how much the Mamba mentality meant to me and how much it drives what I do in my every day once he was gone, even though I intentionally studied it. And the book Relentless from Tim Grover, his, mm-hmm. his trainer, Crazy. a must read. Yeah. A must read. But Kobe was for the haters because if you weren't a Laker fan, you were a Kobe hater, which is all good. We <laughs> we need the haters in the world, but he was, you know, all the haters will call him a ball hog. Yeah, just like if they see you making moves and doing good in real estate, some people may look at you as a shark, or some people may look at you as greedy. Right, mm-hmm. Scrooge McDuck title. But if you talk and you saw this now with what happened with Kobe. All his teammates, every one of them, were there, and they talked, and his, and not even just his teammates. All the young NBA bucks were there with the Olymp, the ones who were with him in the Olympic teams, and they express how much he created win-win situations, not just for himself, but for the team, which is the only reason they won five championships and Olympic gold, and he had so much success. So even though some people may see him that don't know him. As a bog or greedy or selfish, the people that really were impacted by him knew how much he created win-win situations for everybody, which is how I adapt the same exact thing to what we do, mm-hmm. where if you don't create win-win situations, if you're not mentoring people, if you're not helping people come with you, you can't win the championship. No, you can't get you can't to where you're trying yourself. to do. You can't do it by yourself. And the one thing I saw was that how you always, the hatred always came from outside of people who actually played the game, right? The media, the right, media fans. has the nerve to make these lists where Kobe's like number seven greatest of all time. <laughs> or you like will watch first take and they'll say, uh, they'll put six guys in front of him. Michael, I've never seen Michael Jordan emotional in my life. Did you see it at the memorial? Crying. Like Michael, the greatest of the grace of the greatest respect Kobe because they saw the work ethic Right, they saw how, they saw the drive and determination. Right, they saw how he was fearless. That that's what the whole the clutch is fearless. Right, but they also all saw how he helped out others. Right, how many young kids in the game now have said they've worked at his gym? He'll send them a text. Right, they they like he was there for the people. Right, right? Like he was always there for the people, helping people out. I mean, they would always say about his mind. Right, so that whole win win situation because he was a thinker. Right, when he played basketball, he thought at a higher level than most guys figure out how do I put this guy here or how do I challenge that guy to do this because in game th- six or game seven when a run our test hits a three but she doesn't even do that kind of stuff right but I put him in these in these situations and practice all year that he's ready for that right. right that's the kind of things that he was doing that was such high level compared to your average even NBA player 
Yeah, and he was a, a a leader that didn't take any BS and didn't allow you to be your worst self. He forced you to be your best self. He expected, he expected you, you to be your best self. I mean, self. dude, this is the guy that came in the league, and like the reason why him and Shaq couldn't really work was because Kobe was on Shaq. And Shaq could tell you that Kobe should have been on Shaq, right? Right. But all, a lot of the hate came from him and Shaq's relationship, and it was like, no, he was trying to bring out... He saw more in Shaq than what Shaq even saw in himself and was trying to push that out of there, yeah. right? And like that's what we do in real estate, too, where... You know, we have teams, we have partnerships, we have the stuff where we're, we're pushing each other, trying to like, you know, get to this point where it's like, if we can just all make this work together, you know, I see something in you, I got to be hard on you, right? If we're going to all succeed in this, we got we to gotta do it together. We got to step up. You know, After this show, we're sticking around doing a bunch mm-hmm. of videos on for VAs. <laughs> yeah. On a Saturday, on we're a spending Saturday, here you know? all day instead of hanging out with the fam, doing whatever else we want to do. We're in here putting in the work. Mm-hmm. And that's another Kobe Mamba mentality where everybody says if he lost a game, he'd sit in the gym till two in the morning shooting, shooting mm-hmm. something like 10,000 shots or something or crazy weights. like that. Yeah. Lifting weights. He was the first one up, first one training, last one. And LeBron says that when he went, got the first Kobe experience, he went into train also with Tim Grover mm-hmm. and Kobe was already there putting in the work. And then that's when Kobe realized, OK, the only other person here out of a team full of great NBA stars on the Olympic team is LeBron. LeBron. And then that's when their relationship first started. But again, realize Kobe was already <laughs> there, right there when LeBron showed up. And that's what it takes, guys, for financial freedom to shut up and invest, to live that smart money life. If you're just going to go do your nine to five and come home and handle your family and go to bed because you got to wake up the next day, your nine to five is never going to change. And trust me, I understand it's hard, but there's a whole squad of NBA players that just show up and follow the team's regiment. But what did Kobe do and what are the rest of the people that actually accomplish things and leave a mark in this world? They get up. They do the extra. And they do things till no one else in the world will do until they say I am satisfied for today Mm -hmm. that I put in the work and I outworked everybody else so I will have an edge Michael Jordan like you mentioned was crying and in the memorial he was saying how at three in the morning three in the morning (laughs) so guess what so many people I was just having this conversation so many people make decisions for others and what do I mean by that oh let me call Jory and see if he wants to do this deal with me. Nah, you know what? He's probably too busy with it. I just made a decision for you without yeah, taking the even, opportunity. Yeah, asking, or it's 1130 in the more at night. Let me not text him right now because it might be, you know, not mm. cool. It's too late or whatever. Kobe did not care. He is texting Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael <laughs> Jordan, who runs a professional NBA basketball team. Yeah. And the shoe company, the shoe, biggest shoe company in the world. Mm hmm. Texting him at three in the morning to ask him at 12 years old, what were the things you were working on to be the best basketball player in the world so that I can pass that along to my daughter? His daughter, yeah. (laughs) Do you understand what he's at, where his mind is, what he's actually doing? He's reaching out, he's connecting, he's asking questions. He doesn't care what time it is, he's going to the best of the best and He's relentlessly thinking about improving not just him, but his team, essentially, mm-hmm. his family. And the key point about the, everything you said is when he, when he retired from basketball, he did the same thing in the business world, right? The, the, the thing that like, amazed me about Kobe, when that happened, right, and like, my son was all, my youngest son was kind of messing, I sent him a text. I said, you know what? The greatest thing about today is that in this age of technology, when you're greats, you're legends, when they pass, there's a library full of of them speaking, them doing things that you can always look at, right? So I have a Kobe playlist. I already had it before. It's, it's on my phone, right? Of just his interviews. When I'm running in the morning, I don't listen to music. I listen to like motivation, right? So I have a playlist that's just Kobe, just interviews. But he gave some interviews before he passed with some you know, business interviews, just saying how he got into writing the book. Was it the book or the movie? The movie he did that won the Oscar, how he reached out to some of the best directors and producers, you know, Mm -hmm. in the world and just studied them and asked them all these questions. And you'll hear people in the movie industry or the business industry who will have the same, the same kind of experience that Kobe had with Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. They had with him where he just was like a sponge, no matter what time of day it was, you know, Warren Buffett, these guys he would just sit with to try to soak up that information, you know? And I think the key thing is, is that he didn't mind being a pest because he knew that then he was going to turn around and show you that the time 
that you put into him was not going to go wasted. And he was going to show you the outcome mm -hmm. so that you could be like, all right, this guy was blowing me up. He was on my ass, but he went out and did it. Because how many times people ask questions, they bother you, they want your time, and then they don't do nothing with it. And the, I mean, that's the thing. You, it's like, there's so many people asking yourself, but who's actually going to take that knowledge and do something with it, right? And if you don't do anything with it, then you feel like you wasted my time, right? Right. And you waste my money, wait, but don't waste my time, right? Because you, you can't get time back, right? Our time Mamba is so mentality, limited right now. I agree. Mamba mentality, I think, is when you have the confidence that you know I'm going to execute. I just need either information or opportunity. You're not scared to knock on the door or bother people because you know you're going to show them that their opportunity that they gave you or time that they it. gave you is going to be, be worth it. it. Yep. You're going to make it count. And when you have that confidence in yourself, that Mamba mentality that I promise you, if you tell me what's up or if you show me what's up or if you let me. Be a part of this or give me an opportunity. You won't regret, you won't regret it. it. You are not scared to knock on doors. No, you're not scared to pick up the phone and, and make a phone call, a cold call, right? How many people are afraid to make a phone call? Or you'll make 10 phone calls that cuss out eight times and you're done, right? Yeah. That's what mama mentality is. It's like, it doesn't matter. I talk about follow up all the time. I the, I, I talk to people for, for years before you yeah. send them in their house. Somebody goes, well, when you stop calling them, they die. They sell the house, Right. Or they literally tell me never effing call my house again, right? But if that doesn't happen, I'm going to text you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to direct mail you. And like people just don't do that anymore. Yeah. People are afraid to go out to do that. My mom told me at a young age, don't be afraid to ask for anything. The worst they can say is no. Amen. Like, And that's lived with me my whole life. The worst they can tell you is no, right? So you can't be afraid to go out there and get what you want. Even when it comes to finding a mentor or finding this, right? If you really feel like you got that mentality that you can make this work, then yes, bug that person until they until they do what you need them to do because you know deep you, down. That's how you got in the game, right? The broker told me no. no. <laughs> he sent me back home. And I remember my mom said, I remember, and then my wife said, no, go back there and tell them what yeah. you can do for him and get it done. Yeah, And, and right now, now the three of us are doing deals together. Yeah. If you wouldn't have done that, that would have never happened. I could have just went home and been all like, oh, you know, like Kobe airballs. Remember the airballs? Yeah. He could have been like, oh, I'm not ready for the league. I, I, I thought I airballed that first interview at the brokerage that changed my whole real estate course, right? right. If I would have went home and just been like, no, I'm not going. He was mean to me. No. Right. Like, you missed your shot. If there's anything I take from Kobe, Kobe didn't care. Like, like the world doesn't care how you feel. You got to produce. I always say this to my football players. The world doesn't care how you feel. Right? Yeah. They don't care about your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> All they care about is your production. The results. Show me the numbers. Show me the stats, right? Kobe didn't care what anybody said about him. He didn't care if he went three for 20. The next day, he's still shooting 20, right? Because he knew how good he was and he knew what he was going to accomplish. And the work he put in. And the work he put in to do that, yeah. I think confidence comes from the amount of work that you put in, the amount of hustle you put in. So it's not exactly. what the True talent confidence. you have. It's the fact that I'm working. So many people talked about his talent. So many talked about his gifts and his blessings. I think we all do. For example, one thing that I admire about you that I see that I don't see, and I'm around producers all day long. I'm around a lot of people all day long. But one thing that I admire with you is, and it might drive your wife crazy, but <laughs> you pick up all the calls. All of them. I never see you say, <laughs> I'm tired or oh, I ain't going to do it. Uh, so many producers I see go on a roller coaster where today they're maybe broke. Mm -hmm. So they're like this on the phone. Oh, I'm yeah, I'm on it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm calling. I'm making deals happen. Then when their pipe mm -hmm. is Fills looking up. sexy, yeah, they don't do it. Then ah, now nah, I feel like talking to that person. <laughs> oh, no, nah, I ain't going to make the calls. Right now. I'm like, hold on a second. That's what got you. Mm -hmm. The sexy pipeline That's what now is putting the checks in your bank account And you're going to fall off They do that thing where like oh, I got to make some money now Let me go. Yeah, yeah, And then they fall off they Now fall they off. don't want to do the calls Now they don't want to pick up the calls or what not I don't, I've never been with you <laughs> And you stop taking the calls You stop saying Oh we had a good month Okay no this and that Like and again, we'll be in the middle of a conversation and it'll be like an unspoken thing. Like, hey, so what are we going to hold on a second? <laughs> yes, all right. Yeah. No. OK. What? What? What time can we go to that property? OK, hold on a second. And like I said, it might drive your wife crazy. But a, a, a producer recognizing the another producer, producer yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah. go make that money. But you know what's funny about that is conversation. Like, you recognize that and appreciate it. But a lot of people who just mentioned wouldn't appreciate it. They'd be like, oh, that was rude. You know, oh, uh, why are you doing that? No, like. 
I think it's what you said. We got that mentality. It was like, dude, like we have a drive to get to a point where I know how important that call is, right? One missed call could be, eh, yeah, I could call him back, but I understand the importance of answering your phone and talking to people right then, you know? And taking your shot. Yeah, like right then. Pass me the ball. <laughs> that phone call is, pass me the ball. You I know? just got the ball. Move out the way. I'm taking the shot. And I think I've also been to the point where the pipeline's been dry. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not going to let the pipeline be dry I'm again. I'm not going back there. You know, I'm not going back to like the air balls, man. I, I can't do that no more, you know? So, Amen. I gotta, you got to stay on top of it. But that is a mentality that a lot of people in this business, people don't answer the phone ever. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Mama mentality, to recap, to end the show, I'll work everybody. No matter how good you are. No still matter work. how good you are, because that man had all the money in the world <laughs> and had five championships and he was still. Mm-hmm. Leave your mark. Yep, definitely. Are people, when you're no longer around, going to be impacted? Yeah. Help others, man. I told my wife the other day, the world, I think, honestly, everybody just wants to be appreciated in this world, right? And I think the world lacks appreciation. Like, people just don't feel appreciated. They don't feel like anybody cares. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you have or whatever. There's so much people in the world who still don't feel like they care, right? It's true. So make a point. Like Kevin said, make a point to help somebody out every day. Make somebody feel appreciated every day. Yeah. That can change a lot. Leave your family good. Because I'll tell you what, I think go Kobe, probably in those last seconds, I can't speak. And it's obviously super sensitive and a horrible idea. But I think in that last second where everybody's screaming and you realize this may be it, there is at least a peace when you know that you're leaving your family good. And I think that point is the reason why I do answer your phone call, right? I have a wife and five kids. I have a, you know, I have a lot of family who is like, if it happened today, if I don't feel like it's to the point where they're good, that's my biggest fear. The biggest fear in my life is something happened to me before they're all set up where if I'm gone, at least I left them with the, with the roadmap and the assets to be able to keep, you know, and, take care of themselves. And that should be the motivating factor to get up every day. Every day and grind and put in the extra time. And if you got a nine to five job and you're looking to get into this, make get up early, go to bed late. Just like Kobe did with millions of dollars and championship rings. And even after playing a a grueling game, he would stay after if he didn't do good. Cause the obsession to make sure that he was going to be the best and he was going to leave a mark and he was going to leave his family good no matter mm-hmm. what. Even when he left his family good, the obsession did not stop because he realized that that's what got him what was he had. That's what took care of his family. And that was just going to be the way he was going to conduct his life forever. And let's be honest, a nine to five is eight hours. We work more than eight hours. So if you work a nine to five, but you want more, work that eight hours and give three, four more hours. I mean, whatever it takes, right? Because I work more than eight hours every day. Man, and I, I think that's the biggest misconception that people think when you're an entrepreneur, you do, you know, like that you work less. No. Check this out. You work I got all the a, time. I got a picture that I actually took. I snipped. It says the week has 168 hours, 56 hours sleeping, 35 hours eating, showering, traveling, etc. 40 hours working on average, mm-hmm. right? That leaves 37 hours space, time. of space <laughs> in a week. Wow. That's another that's full-time that's whole, job. That's, yeah, that's another job. Yeah. 37 hours, another full-time job. Guess what? A mama mentality doesn't have 37 hours. No. That, no way. They are, they are crushing whatever the goal is in those 37 hours. Yeah. So you have a, you have a whole other job to get everything. Done. And you still eat, you still sleep, and you still... Drive, drive around yeah. and work. The time is there. It's just, what are you going to do with your time? And if you don't have a nine to five, then it's that 40 hours plus that 37 hours. No excuses. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the mentality in the word. No excuses, right? Full responsibility, no excuses. I think we need more of that. Shut up and invest. Mamba out. Shut up and invest. Hey, thank you once again for listening to Shut Up and Invest. If you guys are motivated at the thought of continuing your real estate journey with us, then visit shutupandinvest.com. There you can join our community and take advantage of more free resources. And don't forget, please like, comment, and subscribe to this podcast so you're first to hear our new content every week. Most importantly, get active and don't forget to shut up and invest.